We are passing through the electrical vehicle revolution. There are a lot of startup companies uh, which are getting funding from governments or any other companies. And especially, many car manufacturers are trying to be in this field. One of the examples is Tesla. We hear about this company every day, morning till evening. Nowadays, they are trying to get all their materials, all their supplies by mining. And on the other side, this field is really, really dynamic. Therefore, some companies are leaving, such as Johnson Matthew. Because this field is really competitive and uh, some companies are trying to make a monopoly out of it and they are trying to mass produce all the materials and they wish to supply the battery materials from their companies. And uh, what is happening? The China is trying to build a dominance in this field. Hello everyone, we are two researchers in this field and we will discuss now uh, all the details about electrical vehicle supply chain and the latest news of the 2021. Let's begin. We use lithium-ion batteries in many different fields. Uh, let's categorize them into three parts. Grid energy industry, transportation, and consumer electronics. However, when we look at the scale, we see that a lot of batteries are being used for the electrical vehicles. So, in this video, we will mainly focus on electrical vehicles. In this overview, we can see the supply chain of the electrical vehicles. Battery manufacturers, battery components, chemical processing, and extractions. As you see, a lot of money is being required or committed in this field. Let's go to the details of each component. Here is the application part. In total, uh, the investment in the electrical vehicles are more than $300 billion. And this number is expected to be higher in the close future. Let's look at uh, the battery electrical vehicles and plug-in hybrid electrical vehicles numbers for 2020 and 2021. As we can see, in Europe, China and US, the numbers are jumping. It has already doubled in just one year. If we look at the world's top 10 plug-in car brands, in the first half of 2021, Tesla is the leading company. But many car companies are in this race. Battery manufacturing is a great deal and also a great problem in the world. Nearly 130 billion of dollars is planned to be invested. Where are the battery manufacturing gigafactories located? They are mainly located in Eastern Asia. The most of the companies are uh, based in China and uh, many of them are producing LFP and NMC based batteries. Yes, of course, uh, there are many companies in US, also in Japan, Korea and also in Europe. However, the over 70% of the batteries are being produced in China. Now we can focus to the gigafactories in Europe. When we look at all these electrical vehicles, they need batteries and we would like to supply batteries for each of them. And these gigafactories, such as the ones from UK or from France, they would like to support all these uh, car companies. And uh, Italy is also trying to play a role in this uh, whole game. Big players such as Samsung and LG are trying to join to this game and they would like to build some gigafactories in the Eastern Europe. Uh, on the other side, there are several startup companies such as Northvolt and they would like to play a big role. And several other big companies such as Samsung and also Moro would like to build a gigafactory again. On the other side, the big and the most important part is Germany because Germany has car companies and they are producing uh, many cars and selling a lot of them. Therefore, many companies such as Tesla, CATL or Farasis, they would like to build their gigafactories in Germany. In order to understand the battery companies, we need to understand the battery and their components. How they are produced, what is being used inside the battery. In a battery, we have anodes and cathode sides. These two components are collecting and actually storing lithium ions inside of them. And they are being separated by using a polymer separator. And these lithium ions are being transferred 
by using uh, liquid electrolytes. So we can go into the materials aspect of these batteries. Anodes are mainly produced by using graphite. On the other side, electrolytes are produced by using organic solvents and also the salt inside of it. When we look at the cathode materials, many varieties are being used. The biggest uh, or the famous ones is NMC components. NMC 622811 or 333 are the famous uh, NMC materials. When we would like to produce a battery, we need to focus on to the cost of each component. Let's look at the components one by one. As you may see, uh, the biggest portion is for the positive electrodes. The positive electrodes are having over 30% of the cost of the battery. And the 18% is for the negative electrodes. If we focus on to the anode side, the graphite is the biggest component and it has 60% of the cost of this anode material. Nickel is the largest component of the cathode cost, but lithium is also crucial here. It costs one fourth of the cathode. Up to now, we discussed their costs and how about their places of production, where they are produced. And the batteries are mainly produced in China. How about their components? As you may see, the main player right now is still China. China is producing a lot of uh, anode and cathode materials. And uh, for the rest of the countries, over 80% of the anode materials are being produced in East Asia. Similarly, cathode materials are also highly produced in East Asia, such as over 70%. Up to now, we understand the components of the battery. Now, we would like to understand how they are being produced and where are these resources coming from. Uh, this is a really critical area and we have a really small amount of money in this field and th there's a big requirements for the money to be invested in this field so then more materials can be produced. Let's look at the supply chain of these elements. As we said, uh, we have cathode or anode materials and each of them are produced by the elements and these elements are highly taken out from Argentina, Chile, Australia and some other parts of the world. And most of these elements are transferred to East Asia. So what's happening here then? So the materials are mined and they are extracted from the earth crust and they are coming to, to East Asia and these materials are processed in China. As you may see, China is uh, taking the monopoly in this field. And after that, the cathode materials are produced in China, as you clearly see, 47%. And also anode materials, 67%, are mainly produced in China. And they are distributed to the gigafactories in the world. So then all these batteries can be produced for our electrical vehicles. Now we can go into the latest and the most critical part, extraction of these elements. We need elements to produce the batteries and a lot of money is required for this field. In order to do it, we need to dig in. Let's dig into the topic. What we need? We need many elements, but not all the periodic table, of course. And uh, the most important and the most critical one is the lithium because we are making lithium ion batteries. Lithium is really important because it is small in terms of ionic size and also it can give us high voltage, high energy density and high power in the battery. Where can we find the lithium? We are in the earth, right? So we need to find it out from the earth. So we can take it out from the earth crust or we can take it from the ocean. Um, definitely the earth crust has uh, more concentration of the lithium if we make some assumptions, we may say that for each car, we require five kilograms of lithium. And the lithium amount in the earth is enough for 45 trillions of electric cars. Or it means that around 5,600 cars for each person. What does it mean? Let's try to understand it visually. So do we have enough lithium and where are they? We need to find out some reserves for the lithium. Brine is one type that we can get lithium from the water. On the other side, we have hard rock. It means that uh, lithium reserves are inside the rocks or the minerals. How much do we have? In the earth crust, we have 
10 million tons of lithium, which are right now economically extractable. So if you are the businessman, then if you wish to extract these lithiums, then you are the rich guy, so you can get a lot of money. On the other side, we have 20 million tons of potentially economical lithium reserves. It means that these are the future rich people. We can say that if you have a better technology, or if the price of lithiums are getting a little bit higher, then this amount of uh, lithiums will be feasible to be extracted. Still, what does it mean? It means that if we try to extract these 10 million tons of lithium, for eight person, we will have two electrical vehicles. On the other side, if we can extract these 25 million tons of lithium, then for eight people, we can have five EVs. Unfortunately, this is not the case currently. Right now, we have only one electrical vehicle for 3,000 people. If we use the other type of cars, such as electrical vehicles or maybe the gasoline cars, then right now we have one car for six people. How and where can we extract these lithiums? Let's discuss a little bit about uh, lithium production. And there are right now two methods. First one is the brine and the second one is hard rock. Let's go into the details of these techniques. First one is the example from Chile. As you may see the lakes, they are coming from the brine water. They are pumped into the small pools and they are being concentrated. After these concentrations, the lithium is left. The concentration of lithium is getting higher and uh, they are being extracted. After that, we have the powder. This powder is mainly made of lithium carbonate. 65% of today's lithium production is from brine methods. The other method which can be used to, to extract lithium is the hard rock. What we need is the earth crust. So we need the mineral from the earth crust, lithium mineral. Therefore, we need to explode the earth crust and collect the hard rock. They are being collected in the factories and uh, they are broken. After that, they are grinded. Then some chemical processes are being done. Several uh, processes are used and then the lithium concentration is increased. Then later on, this lithium is being extracted from these minerals. Therefore, we can have lithium hydroxide by this method. 25% of today's lithium production is from hard rock methods. In this map, lithium production all around the world is represented. The size of the circles are showing the amount of lithium production. Especially in South America and also Australia, the production is really high. When we look at South America, nearly half of the lithium production is coming from this place. Up to now, we discussed about the locations of the lithium reserves. They are located in different parts of the world. Unfortunately, lithium deposits are not created equally. They cost differently. Some are cheaper, some are more expensive. Therefore, the production uh, costs are really worrying. Previously, we discussed about uh, economically extractable and potentially extractable lithium reserves. And now we can understand it a little more clearly. The price of lithium is currently $16,000 uh, per meter tons LCE. And the companies are producing them under these prices. And all this uh, shaded area is profit. So the businessman is earning money from this 10 million tons of lithium. What about the other parts, 25 million tons? Uh, unfortunately, their uh, production cost is really high, so it is much higher than the current prices. Then how can we get it? How can we get these lithium reserves to the cars? In order to get these 25 million tons of lithium, there are two ways. First one is to increase the prices. Therefore, your car will be getting more expensive. And this is uh, unfortunately not the thing which we want. Therefore, we need a second solution. The second solution is to decrease the production costs of lithium. How can we do it? The best way is to improve this technology and to use new methods to extract more lithium.
In this way, then the lithium reserves can be used more efficiently. Then this potentially economical lithium reserves can be taken and placed into our EVs. To finalize, we can say that supply chain is really critical in EV technology. And uh, we cannot say that one of the components is really important and we need to forget about the rest of the pieces. We should be really careful because EV market is so new and the supply chain is so dynamic. Therefore, watch out how things change in this field. Hopefully, this video will help you to understand the EV supply chain.